room? We don't, do we? No. But you know twins, yes? Now, twins are pretty cool, especially identical ones, yes? Because they share in completely the same, completely the same DNA, yes? So if they're separated at birth, those kind of twins, or they've been separated later in life, yes? And one has had, let's say, some horrible thing happen to them, whatever, it could be anything. Versus the other one, you're like, oh, weird. See how things change with them, yes? And so they're paired in that they have to share the same DNA. Ooh, but they're different in what their life experiences have been done, yes? So it's not like you take random people over here and random people over here and test to see if there's a difference, no. In fact, they have some kind of relationship there. Now, we call that paired data. So, paired data can be done several ways. The classic paired data is the classic before-after appearance. Before and after. The longitudinal study, if you will. Mr. Grum, we're going to follow these children from year to year to year and see if they get smarter. Okay, good for you. Nice. Now, you could have a complete bozo in the class. I mean, just a dunce. Oh, my God. He's a moron. Or she. Let's not be sexist. It could be a she. Right? The question is, did that moron do a better job every year? Did they grow? Yes. They, maybe they did. Maybe they did. Here's the deal. If you're really bad, are they ever going to get over the hump? No, probably not. Maybe not. Are they going to improve? Yes. Yeah, yeah. How about the very smart kid? Is the smart kid going to keep getting better and better? Maybe. Maybe not. But when I test him versus himself, I can measure growth, yes? And so I want to talk about, so here is, now, growth in what, Mr. Room? Could be anything. How well they do in math. How fast they run something. How much they can lift. How many pull-ups they could do. Yes? So I think I'm going to start Mr. Groom's gym for the unathletic. Right? I'm president. All right? Or the sort of, I'll call it the sort of athletics. Okay? There you go. Sort of used to be athletics. That's what I'm going to call it. Mr. Groom's gym for the sort of used to be athletic types. Okay? Uh, A.K.A. the offensive lineman. Okay? There you go. Now, here's the game. Um, you know, we want let's talk about, what can we do? We could talk about the weight loss when you come to my gym because I'm going to get you on some sort of strict workout plan. Yes? And so what am I going to do? I'm going to weigh you in before. And so this again is Mr. Grooms for the former offensive lineman types. Okay. So their before weights will be something like this. No. Oh. With former offensive linemen, some of us get fat. Some of us were already fat. And some of us just don't really lose the weight. All right. He was a small one. He was a small one. Interesting. Uh, 291, whatever. And look, here are their after weights. After th five weeks on Mr. Groom's program of, of eating right and, and working out, running, and da 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 da, this is what you should expect. If it sounds like an infomercial, it should, because that's in essence what we're doing here. Now, 271. Holy cow, he's a mere shadow of himself. Sure. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I got a good program going here. But listen, here, by the way, if, you had th if you're 310 pounds of sloppiness, you can afford to drop weight quickly, right? If you're like five pounds overweight, the last five tend to go away slowly, right? Because there's just not much left to deal with, okay? Oh my God, I'm 121. I have to get to 116. First of all, why? Second of all, you got nothing left to lose. What are you going to do? Cut a bone off or something? I mean, come on. You're a joke. All right? Now, these people got a lot of extra sloppiness to get rid of. It's not that hard to do. Okay? Okay? By the way, that is why, I mean, for two reasons. Obviously, we get the 500 pounders on the biggest losers because no one's going to pay to see you lose the, the, big, the biggest need to lose 10 pounders. No one's going to watch that show. Okay? Um, people will watch the show. People will say, oh my, he lost 30 pounds this week. Wow. Well, yeah, wow. But other people are like, oh my God, Josie Hannah's on her show. She lost a quarter of a pound. Yay, Josie. <laughs> okay. I mean, whatever. It's just silly. All right. I, I watched it once. I found it annoying. Um, what do you notice? I got gained five. Mm. Probably muscle. 
There's always got to be a loser in some crowd, right? Whatever. Oh, okay. I don't know. Or not a loser in this case, huh? Now, listen. I would like to test to see if my program is effective. You with me? How would I know if it's effective? If they lose weight. How will I know if they lose weight? Well, and what will I do? I weighed them twice. What am I going to do with that? What, say, say, what do I do with it? Find the difference. Yes. Are you going to do before minus after or after minus four? Okay. Now, wait a minute. Before minus after. Now, before minus after. If, if, if I'm getting them to lose weight, should this be a positive difference or a negative difference? Pause. Now, but listen, you, you said before minus after. You said it, not me. I listened to you. 310 minus 280. Did this person lose weight? But you said before minus after. And it's the big and this is bigger and that's smaller. And that's, why. that's why I'm looking for a positive difference, okay. yes? Okay. Now, just like the other day when we looked at the old hag and the young girl picture, whatever, that picture where you could be seen either way, several of us said this. Connor Ned, I saw him, he's going, that's, that's weird. I would have done after minus before. Okay. And what would Connor be expecting if he did after minus before? Oh, I know! Literally. That's it. It really comes down to what did you hear? What did you see? That's it. Can I subtract them in any order I want to? Yes. But does it change what tail it is? So pay attention to that, okay? So I was told to take the difference. I'm going to do it. 34? 12? 22? 10? 25? Ugh. Negative 5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I've got a column of numbers after minus befores, or differences if you prefer. Now what do I do with it? What do I do now? Because 291 minus 296, in the order that you told me, this negative means what? That he gained weight, which I can see that without subtracting. I'm not, a, I'm not an idiot. I'm a jerk. People don't like me. I get that, but I'm not completely stupid. I can do arithmetic, Connor. Now, what do you want to do with this column of numbers, friends? What would you like to do with that thing? If you saw that, what would you do with it? What's that? Oh, okay, good, good. So I'd probably want to find this, and I'd probably want to find this too. You're, you're not wrong. After I did that, what would I do? After I did that, what would I do with it? Okay, now, okay, 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 stop. I love the idea if you were going to make a Z-score, because I've got you trained. Oh, we're going to make a Z-score, because we do that a lot. However, the title of my lesson was the paired T-test. Oh, okay. And second of all, how many data points do you have right here? Well, not 30. Ha! <laughs> not 30 of them. So I'm going to be doing a T-test. You mean a t-test just like from chapter 8 with one population? Ah, yes. Yes, indeedy. Just like that. Does that make sense? So, first things first. Now, if you have Google Sheets, take out your Google Sheets or your Excel. And what I would like, this is how I would do it. I would go ahead and put my data over here, my befores and my afters. And over here, I just go equals this fella minus this guy and get the differences. You with me? That's what I would do. For those of you with calculators, whip them out real quickly. Whether it's 83 or 84, 89, it's all about the same in terms of how we're going to get there. So I'm going to put on 84. If you have an 89, just play along. It's the same deal. Go to your, go to your lists and play along with us. Okay, so I'm going to go to stat, edit. I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to hit clear, enter on all these. Clear, enter, not delete. Clear, enter. And then go all the way over and hit clear, enter again. Yes? There, they're all gone. Uh -huh. 
Once, you're, once they're gone, now let's put in our actual data. And again, it's the same thing for everybody, roughly. It's just going to be the same basic procedure. 273, 262, 305. Okay, and here, 280, 271, 260. Hey, no, 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 Did I mess up? Yeah. Yeah. Two, six, one, two, oh, my lands. That's ridiculous. That guy gained a lot of weight. <laughs> now, it is important that you put my befores next to my afters. Are you with me on this? You cannot mess it up. It would be really horrible if you did it where, you know, some big fat guy, he dropped weight, but then you put my, like, if you put my, before, my afters by his befores or whatever, it could really screw things up. Are you with me on this? So, like, Andy's weight must be next to Andy's, and Bob's next to Bob's, and so on. And we're all offensive linemen, so I'm going to go with they're all boys here in this case. Okay? <laughs> whatever. There it is. Okay, now, again, in giggle sheets, you know how to subtract. In this dealio, bring your cursor back to the top. I just want to show you this is where it's a little tricky, Dicky. Get up here on top of the L3 up there, yes? And notice how at the bottom it says L3 equals enter. You see this? Mm -hmm. You simply are going to do, I was told to do this, L1, so second number one, minus, and then second number two. Yes? And then hit enter. Unless you're weird... Unless you're weird and you wanted to do L1, L2 minus L1, in which case it'd be different. You people on the 89s have to literally type in list 1 minus list 2 when you subtract them, okay? That's the only thing. You have to go alpha L, alpha I, alpha S, and then T is got its own button. 1 minus alpha I, alpha S, alpha T, 2. Enter. But it's exactly the same dealio. And then voila, there's my differences. Yes, they are 100% the same. Can't I just subtract them in my head? Guess so. I guess so. I guess. That feels weird. But I guess you could totes do that. Now, let's do this. Go to stat, calc, uh, calc yes. One variable statistics, but on what column? Yo, column three. So second number three. And then hit enter. And that's what I got. Okay, so I got that the average was 18.28. Is that right? So 18.28. What was this? Oops. What was the standard deviation? 13.5. <laughs> That's a big standard deviation. Why? Because you got that negative fella, and you got this other dude that dropped 34 pounds. Holy cow! That's a big standard deviation. Yes. Okay. Now, now for you peeps on the giggle sheets, right? What do we have to do? So you've got a column of data right here. I would just go right here. It go equals average, right, of that column, like so, right? Okay, so listen, here's the dealio. Here's the dealio, okay? This is just where you're going to make most of your mistakes on this deal is data entry. You're going to fat finger a number somewhere with your sausage fingers. So equals average, yes? And then also equals standard deviation, yes? So on the giggle sheets, it's STD, EV. What is it on the standard? It's yeah, different. That's, it. that's just it right here? Yeah. Should be like that right there and click and highlight them again, yes? Uh -huh. Or well, you have to type it in with the whatever. Uh -huh. Okay? But we're all here with 18.28 13.25, correct? Whichever way we got here, we are here now. <coughs> so let's make a T, shall we? And so the T is 18.28. Minus what? What would I minus? Remember, it's x bar minus mu over sx over the square root of n, correct? What's mu? The average from where? It's zero? Oh, so it doesn't It's, well, it's, but let's just go ahead and write minus zero. Why? Because under the null hypothesis, they lost more than zero pounds. That's what we're saying. Okay. If they didn't lose more than zero pounds, significantly more than zero pounds, my weight loss program sucks, right? And let's see what happens here. So minus zero over 13 and a half over the square root of seven. 
Is it seven? Yeah. Seven. I don't know. I just work here. By the way, yesterday, a guy at OIT came to me, who I haven't had in class for, I don't know, probably a couple months, by a couple semesters or quarters, I mean. He's like, I heard you were you're moving and leaving. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I think what happened was is that when that happened a couple weeks ago, I think I told one of my classes about the funny story. And then someone passed that along as if it was the gospel or who knows, I don't know. Bunch of weirdos. And a gal I know at Beaverton yesterday, she teaches at one of the at the health sciences school over there. She's transferring to the new Beaverton school. She's like, you should come teach. I'm like, no. Is that a new huge one? No. Yes. Not gonna happen. It's gonna be the biggest school in the state of Oregon. And as if I didn't have enough weird PC weirdness, strange. Here, let's do the latest and greatest cool weird crap here. It's like that on steroids over there. No. I need to go oh, that away. Or I can just teach math. What? 3.5. Now, let's take a rocket surgeon to figure this out, friends. We are going to. I think, though, I can pretty safely say I'm going to reject H naught, yes? Now, let's go ahead and draw the picture, though, and find this cutoff score, shall we? So let's just say it's 0.05 just for a good time. So we're going to do T inverse or inverse T or whatever. What are we going to put in for probability here? Don't screw this up. What are we going to put in? T dot, a T dot inverse, inverse T, whatever it is in your calculator. What? 0.95 because it's area to the left. And, and how many degrees of freedom do we have here? Six. 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 Beautiful. And what does that come out to be? 1.94. Geez, I'm not shocked by that. Look where 3 is, or 3.7, or whatever it is. It's out there. And as you well know, about 2 is the entrance to Freakville. Regardless, it's somewhere around 2-ish. And if you're out at 3, 3.5, that's significantly bad, right? It's weird. Now, what does that say about my program? I'm going to reject H0. So, Mr. Grooms, Mr. Grooms, uh, workout for for former fairly athletic men, oh, aka O lineman, uh, is I don't know successful. It works, or uh, you know, causes you to lose a significant amount of weight. You could write you could write a hundred different ways from Sunday, but I like that. That I like this. This is uh, that's a great title for a workout club. There, I like it. I probably should lose some lard before I start preaching at people. Though, all right, nice. Questions, comments, concerns. The paired T test is really straightforward. Well, they're going to do another one. Okay? So basically, it's basically exactly like a regular one population T test? Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. With the exception of that you need to do a subtraction first. Right. We don't have to find P value. Wait a minute. I don't have to find P value. Can I find P value? Yes, you can. Yes, I could. And how would I do it? So on the giggle sheets slash Excel, it would be something like this, T dist, right? T dot dist, however you're gonna do it on your deal. You'd put 3.6 or something in there, correct? Degrees of freedom would be six, and then one. And because it's an upper tail test, you do one minus that business, correct? On a calculator, we do TCDF from 3.6 to infinity. Oops, well, yeah, 3.6, wait, wait, it would be, how does that go? Yeah, 3.6, E99. Yeah, E99, and then your degrees of freedom, right? So 0 0.005. Well, that's pretty small chance of happening. It's less than 0 0.05, so yay, reject. Nice. That's a good review. I like that. Now, <clears throat> interesting. Notice how this could be done very well, for instance, in a PE classroom, correct? That is, you come in, we give you a before thing, we, we, we teach you how to do something, we work out for a few weeks, we do it again, we'd expect improvement, yes? 
All right. We can do this for bowling, golf. Very straightforward, very easy to do. We could even do it for, for instance, we could even do it for some, like for instance, you had a wart. We could squirt some wart cream on it. And we could measure the size of it before and then after kind of a deal. That's true. You could measure each different wart. Now, we wouldn't normally do that for wart deals because we normally just have, we could do a, a different kind of test. We'd probably just do a straight T test or Z test for that. But when it comes to people, some people are just completely unathletic. And they will never be able to bowl more than about 85 or whatever, even with bumpers maybe, okay, because they're just completely unathletic. So I'd want to compare them versus themselves to show I have growth, okay? I don't want to put them in with the middle of, with everybody else because I might, I might show that there's some improvement afterwards versus before or whatever by different groups or whatever, but I really want to compare them versus themselves because that way I get rid of all the weirdness so to speak. Everybody like Krista has their own weird standard deviation or their weird low initial average, okay? So if I'm testing them versus themselves, I get a better, truer picture of what's going on, okay? So that's kind of a deal. Uh, this kind of thing is used in longitudinal studies where we measure things over time frequently. So it used to be this, now it's this. Did it get better? Did it get worse? Whatever it is, okay? Now, let's do another one. Ooh. Right. Um, yeah. So, so, Duffy wants to know, wants to, uh, wants to help people, wants to help people. Let's give her a hand for that. Thank you. Wants to help people bowl better. Okay, but I'm going to. I'm going to phrase it a little differently from this situation. So I'm going, to, I'm going to look at the data first. Okay. So that's her idea. That's like her senior project. She can get like a bunch of people together and go teach them how to bowl, I guess, better or something. I don't know. You could do that. I'm literally pulling crap out of my butt like I always do. I'm sorry, the magic pest dispenser. This is, not her, this is not her senior project. Although that's not the worst senior project idea I've ever heard either. Okay. The worst one ever, which they wouldn't allow it nowadays, but I kid you not, this girl, <laughs> I had to judge it too, it was the goofiest thing. She had pictures and everything. Here's her grandma sitting in this this chair or whatever with her feet up. No, 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 no. It's like a, it's like a, it's a, it's a recliner. I kid you not, she gave her grandma a pedicure and a manicure. No. Who proved that? This was a few years ago, before they had a little more restriction. I'm like, for real? You painted your grandma's toes. No. <laughs> yeah, well, no, listen, she washed them and sanded them and all that business. Right. That's a lot of toes. Just 10 toes. Yeah, we have to do for 20 hours. You have to have 20 hours for your season. Anyway, nowadays, this was old days. This was old days. But that's the dumbest one ever. So, here's before. Shh. Here's after. Now, don't make a comment on this until I'm done. I'm going to pick on some people, Hallie. Hallie, beforehand, could bowl 110. Afterwards, she's 105. Uh, Shannon. Uh, she bowled a 105. Now she bowls a 120. That's cool. Ashley. There's an E in there somewhere. I don't know. This doesn't look like it, but there is. I promise you. She bowled a 95 before. Now she bowls a 110. That's cool. Uh, is Trenton. Trenton used to bowl about 2.30 <laughs> after some lessons. <laughs> 190. Nice. Connor. Uh, 32. 50. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa. Nice. There we go. Lisa. 171. 172. Awesome. Abs. Uh, 195, 162. Okay. So, I'm looking at that stuff right there. And originally, I was thinking this should be a one-tail test where did it improve. Now my question is, are their scores different? Are they different? Now, we could phrase this a bunch of ways. I just really wanted to do a two-tail test. You know what I'm saying? So, if it's a two-tail test, 
How are you going to subtract them? I don't know, but here's my game. I'm just going to do before minus after. And either it equals zero, yes? In other words, what happened to their scores? There was no significant change in their scores, yes? Or they've changed significantly. Better or worse? I don't know. We'll figure that out in a minute, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. now I did, Duffy, I'm sure if you gave bowling, I'm sure it would be better. <laughs> I'd oh. probably be like, trade. Okay. <laughs> Just, just killing a poor guy's score. All right. So again, in your particular calculator, let's go find the difference. You should get 5, negative 15, negative 15, right? Um, this minus this is 40. That minus that is negative 18, negative 1, and negative... No, positive 33, right? Now, does that bother you, those scores? Some people would bother them. I can see Fiona's wheels are turning. She is thinking this, Mr. Graham. I feel like Duffy should be doing after minus before, right? Because a positive difference means the people did what? They did better. That's right. And if you want to do it that way, you knock yourself out. In which case, if you did it the other way around, it'd be five, po negative five, positive 15, and so forth and whatnot. It will literally be the same thing for standard deviation, but your average will be the negative of what the other people's got. Okay? It makes no difference to me. It makes no difference to me. Okay? So you should be playing along so that when you go home, you're like, oh my God, I forgot how to do it. I mean, I know it's on the video, but <laughs> find out how to run your machine now so that when you go home, you're like, I know what I'm doing. Then you could like, I don't know, hurry up and watch Supernatural or whatever stupid thing you watch on Netflix. How do you know about that? I don't know, because Beasley's always talking about it. I don't know. I will just leave you to that. That's all he ever, I was watching uh, Supernatural. I don't know what that is, but that's cute. What's that? Never seen it. All right, remember to be up here. Remember to be up on the top of L3 to pull this off. Some of you will listen to about half of what I say and hear and listen to none of it or whatever. Listen, you've got to be up on top. If you try to type it where, where, that, where the little dotted line is, it'll yell at you. And it should yell at you because you're an idiot to put it there. So I got those because I went before minus after. If you did after minus before, you get the opposite of those. But they're the same numbers. It's a two-tailed test, so it doesn't make any difference anyways. It didn't matter if it's a one-tailed test. Just to make sure you did it the other way. I got five negative. I got the same numbers. Oh, I haven't done it yet. Okay, once you're here, it's stat, calc, one bar stats on L3. So I got 4.14. If you did it the other way around, it would be negative 4.14. Standard deviation is 23.6, 23.7. Holy buckets. So X bar is, what did I say, four point something? Standard deviation is 26.7 or something? 23. Oh, 23.7. Just, just, just sue me. Just sue me. Whatever. Just whatever. Okay, now, let's make a T, shall we? So our T is going to be X bar minus zero. What? Over, holy cow, 23.7 divided by how many people? Seven again? Oh darn, I didn't mean to do seven again. Yes, dear. I knew you were... Probably. Maybe only 99% of the time. For instance, Mr. Groom could have said that his, his weight loss club for those who were formerly semi-athletic men slash offensive linemen, that they lose on average 10 pounds. So I could have said that. So in other words, before minus after would have been equal to 10 or greater than 10. You with me on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's totes fine. But yeah, I would say it's more like 99% of the time it'll be zero. Maybe 98 even. So you know, a lot of times when I say 99, I really mean that this one could actually be a case where I make a claim that I can get you to lose 10 pounds on average or something. Yeah. Okay, so the answer is 0.46. Well, I haven't done it yet. Wait, wait stop. So 0.46, that's key. But like, what's the alpha? Well, by the way, listen, before I even give you an alpha, if you got a T or a Z score of 0.46,
the entrance to Freakville is somewhere near two-ish, yes? Is this anywhere near two? So my decision will be to fail to reject, yes? We're going to go ahead and do it anyways. We're going to go ahead and do it anyways. Okay? Watch me make up an alpha. Uh, so 0.05. if you do it the other way, you're going to end up with Yes! If you do it the other way, you will get negative 0.46. That is 100% accurate. That's correct. Now, let's do this thing. Yes? And we said it was a two-tailer. So we're putting 0.025 in each tail, correct? So T inverse or inverse T or however you put it into your calculator, 0 0.025 comma 6 degrees of freedom, correct? And what do you get? Negative 2.44 and positive 2.44. As promised, near Freakville starts near 2-ish, yes? We were nowhere near 2, so of course our decision is to fail to reject. I'm shocked. How can I find a p-value for that? Well, let's do it together, okay? Now, we'll do it two ways, so pay attention to how I do it the first time, okay? If you did positive 0.46, you would do t-dist or t-cdf, whichever it is thing you're doing there, and you would go from 0.4, uh, you'd do 0.46 comma 6 degrees of freedom comma 1, right, on, on the Google Sheets, right? And that would go 1 minus that. And that would give you from here up. Yes? If you got negative 0.46, you would not do the 1 minus, correct? Because you're on the lower side already. What do we get for that? 0.33. That you got? I'll buy that for a nickel. Double check it, but I think that sounds pretty reasonable. Reasonable-ish. Is that what you got? Well, okay, we're not done yet. So this part right here is 33%, yes? But it's a two-tailed test, so bam. So our p-value, well said, Alex, is 0.66. Nice. And again, not shocked by that, because where is 0.46? It's right in the middle. It's where it should be if what? If h naught is true. That's where I expect it to be. So our decision is to reject h naught. I'm sorry, thank you. That's why I was in my head I said that. Ha! Fail to reject H naught. Thank you. I was literally gonna say this. Duffy's bowling. Ducks. Bowling. I the it's in there. You just can't see it. <laughs> bowling program es no bueno. Es no bueno. I didn't know you were bilingual, Mr. Groom. Well, now you do. No, okay. That's about the extent of it, though. Agua, cerveza, baño, porfidor. I could get. I could make myself understood. Okay, I could get along. Give me a burrito. I'm hungry. Kind of a thing. I, it'd come back to me if I needed it. Whatever. There you go. Now, the pair T test is not hard, friends. It is just not hard. The only tricky things that you'll run into, there are two. Han uh, Josie, Anna, write this down in your memory banks somewhere. Your mistakes will be data entry. You will type the freaking number in wrong. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Put the Snapchat down. Turn the freaking devil music off for a couple minutes. <laughs> Shut off the dadgum Netflix and pay attention to what you're doing. Okay. That's number one. <laughs> number two, the other thing that you will do wrong is when you set it up, you will go, okay, I'm going to do before minus after, or I'm going to do after minus before, and you will talk yourself into getting the wrong tail. So you will say after minus before. That's great. By the way, you're not wrong. You can always do that. But the way you subtract determines what tail it is. And so what people will do is they'll subtract it one way, and then they'll use the wrong tail. Ah! So ask yourself, if my weight loss program works, the before minus after should be a positive difference. Yes? Because they should weigh less after they've worked out. That's kind of the whole point. If, if I have a program to make skinny people who can't gain weight gain weight, then in theory, 
before should be smaller than after, yes? So if I did after minus before for them, that's the, so after is a smaller number, after should be a bigger number than before, they should have gained weight, yes? It should be bigger than zero, right? And so keep those things in your head when you're doing this. That's where people will screw them up because you'll be like, you'll overthink it sometimes too. Be like, what? Lindsay would do this. I mean this in a, right, I mean this in a nice way. You like, you'll come in and you'll, you'll have talked yourself silly thinking about this thing. But I feel like that if I do it this minus this, then it should be positive. But that doesn't make sense because that, uh, just quit overthinking it, okay? Just ask yourself this question. Well, I know you do, and I appreciate that because you actually think about it. Unlike some other people, it's like write some crap down. But you can overanalyze it too much. So just ask yourself. And it doesn't matter which way you do it, after minus before or before minus after. Pick one and then ask yourself, should this be a positive difference or should it be a negative difference, okay? What do you mean, should it be? Quiet. If I'm teaching you how to, if I'm, if I'm putting you in a bench pressing program, Theoretically, your after should be bigger than your, than your before, yes? If it's a golf program, your score after should be smaller. That's how it works. I don't golf, Mr. Groom. I don't care. So in my stats class at the college last night, they're coming up with their own data for their projects, which, by the way, you guys will do later this term, too. It's pretty exciting. But get this one. So this one girl manages a restaurant. Girl, she's my age. What am I talking about? Whatever. Anyway. We were talking about it. She's like, I could totally analyze like days of the week and I could talk about, and she was like, wait, initially she was talking about what kind of tips she gets from people. Is there a difference male and female tipping her? Is there a difference on the gender of the wait staff? Mm -hmm. Other people were going that too. I thought this is pretty exciting. This is pretty exciting. And then these two people were talking about gaming stuff. I lost interest rapidly. <laughs> This guy goes, I'm going to do a two-way Nova on what kind of critter you are. Troll, whatever, something, something, witch, something, wizard, I don't know. I kind of was like, okay. And how many experience points, this, that, the other thing. I'm like, okay. And then what? Based on whether I win. I'm like, so, so then he's like, oh, how many games I win out of 10? I'm like, well, you know you have to repeat that more than one time. He's like, yeah, I'm going to do it like a bunch of times. I'm like, well, so if you have three different kind of critters and two different kinds of experience points here, that's six boxes. You have to play 10 games. 10 games is one number in each box. You need like three numbers in each box. So you're going to have to play like 180 games. He's like, yeah, that's no problem. Okay, then. Awesome. But I sit sitting there going, uh -huh. So with golf, you know, if you run into a situation where like, you know, if you don't realize golf's supposed to have a lower score afterwards, you could just ask. You could probably ask the great googly moogly. Um, you know, things of this nature. But for the most part, all the ones the book asks you about are really straightforward. They're really straightforward. Uh, another one, Abby, that might come from the book. Marines versus Army in training for this one kind of thing. In that it might be a situation where they're doing the same sorts of training. So they're related in that regard. And so it was interesting. But usually, just, usually most of the time, this thing is more of a, it's either with twins kind of a thing, where they're de very definitely related in some fashion, or it's a before and after on the same people. On the test, you will have a pretty good idea this is not a two-sample T when you realize it's the same people being tested multiple times. If you hear that, that is code for paired T. I mean, I couldn't write it any bigger if I bold printed it in 72 font. This is a freaking paired T test. If I told you that it was this is what happened last week and now we're doing it again this week, there it is. Okay, it's very straightforward. Okay, but it's exactly like the other one. At least one test left. How exciting. It's the F test. That means we're having a test next week on this. Yes, it'll be a two day test. What day is it, you ask, Mr. Grimm? I don't know. Let's find out. It's on the calendar. You mean you planned already next week? I did. How did that happen? I don't really know. I got, I got excited, I guess. <laughs> Hask rule. Hask you. Hask you. Hi, how are you? I was like, Grandma, send me a selfie. There we go. Look at that. 
So, we're doing F test tomorrow slash work day. Friday, TBA. What does that mean, Mr. Chairman? I haven't signed yet. TBA announced. Oh, yeah, it's TBA announced, but I don't know what it's going to be yet. Uh, Friday. Uh, work day. Maybe. Yeah. It might be a cool little thingy job I haven't decided yet. And then Monday we'll review, Tuesday, Wednesday test. Okay, that's what we're planning on. So, be aware. FYI.